Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This thing wasn't on. Is it on now? Yes. You can hear it? Because I can't hear myself. <laughs> we can hear you. All righty. We're going to be in 2 Samuel this morning, chapter 12. 2 Samuel, chapter 12. You there? Say amen. 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 Everybody's there. It sounds like. We're gonna read. Let me get my notes open here. We're gonna read till one, till verse eighteen, right now. Then we're gonna go back. And it said, "The Lord sent Nathan to David. When he came to him, he said, There were two men in a certain town, one rich and the other poor.'" The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle. But the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb he had bought. He raised it and grew it up with him and his children. It shared his food, drank from his cup, and even slept in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. Now a traveler came to the rich man. But the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveler who had came to him. Instead, he took the ewe lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him. David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, as surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this deserves to die. He must pay for the lamb four times over, because he did such a thing and had no pity. Then, David, then Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. This is what the Lord God says of Israel. I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your masters to you and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if all of that had been too little, I would have given you even more. Why do you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Amorites. Now, therefore, the sword will never depart from your house because you despised me and took the wife of Uriah, the Hittite, to be your own. This is what the Lord says. Out of your own house, I am going to bring calamity upon you. Before your very eyes, I will take your wives and give them to one who is closest to you and he will lay with your wives in broad daylight. You did it in secret, but I will do these things in daylight before all of Israel. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, The Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. But because by doing this, you have made the enemies of the Lord show utter contempt. The son born to you will die. After Nathan had gone home, the Lord struck the child of Uriah's wife, had born to David, and he became ill. David pled with God for the child. He fasted and went into the house and spent the night laying on the ground. The elders of his house household stood behind him to get to get him up from the ground, but he refused, and he would not eat any food with them. And on the seventh day, the child died. Let's pray this morning. Lord, we give you thanks for this day, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word right now, Lord. Lord, help anoint this message that something will be said, Lord, that someone would grab a hold of it, Lord, and take it with them, Lord. Lord, we ask that you touch everyone right now where they are. Lord, we ask you to touch those people that are not here this morning, Lord. And the things they're dealing with, Lord. 
Bless us this morning. Bless your word. Amen. Amen. I entitled this lesson, I had a title before, but I felt like the Lord wanted me to change it when I was up there on the drums. And I just titled it, Harden. Harden. Now, we know the story, most of us know the story of David and Bathsheba. It's a pretty common story. David, you know, stayed home from the war and went on the rooftop because he couldn't sleep. And he saw Bathsheba bathing. And he called for Bathsheba to come into him, and he lied with her, and she eventually became pregnant with his son. And he called for Uriah to come because he wanted to cover this thing up, which is really messed up when you think about it. But David was a king. He called Uriah home, and he said, go lie with your wife. Enjoy your wife. Because he wanted to cover it up, but Uriah refused. And by refusing, David sent him to his death. He put him on the front lines of the battle yes. because he knew he was going to die. Yes. This was David. It said, since David had sinned, this had been one year that Nathan had came to him. This one king that was so sensitive to God at one time became so hardened that he went a year without repenting of his sin. One year. David the king. We know that David, and we've talked about it, and we've had many lessons with David in our, in our Sunday school. David was such a great man of God. But this point here, it shows you that anybody can fall to anything. This is very serious. and it's, It had been one year, and he had tried to cover it up. This one spiritual king was now hardened to his sin. It says, number one, my point number one, we're going to get into the points pretty quick here. Number one, sin hardens your heart towards God. David was such a great king. And to think he went a year. This was what the Bible says. He was a man after God's own heart. And he went a year without repenting of his sins. He was hardened towards God and towards God's voice. Because it said the baby was already born. When he struck the baby, the baby was here. So you think the process of when he laid, we know it takes nine months to give birth. The process of when he laid with Bathsheba, Uriah died, and then the baby was born. That's a long stint to go without repenting of your sins and being the king of Israel. Amen. Number two, what, or what, what, what shocked me was David had to be told about his sin. That he didn't even think about it. That Nathan the prophet had to come in and tell him. Now this would have had to been, you know, a tough situation for Nathan. Yes, he was a prophet and he was coming with God's message. But David was still the king. He was still in charge. And so for him to go, and he has to, he has to, and he tells him basically in a parable to get him to understand but number two point this morning is sin takes you farther than you want to go. Yes, it does. Much, much farther. The Lord really dealt with me on this message many, many months ago. And I started writing and I have little notes in my phone. And something I believe it was Tim said sparked this message. And I write it in my notes section. And it will just come to me and come to me more and more. And I'll just continue to write it. Because a lot of times I don't have my notebook with me. I have my Bible, but I don't have my notebook. But one thing that struck me so much is that David, by doing this, he not only committed adultery, which is a damnable sin, because in the Old Testament they would stone you. I mean, David deserved to die. The king deserved to die for what he did. But he not only committed adultery, he tried to cover it up, which made him a liar. So you're looking at it now... He's an adulterer, and then now he's a liar. And then he sent Uriah to his death and became a murderer. David came into this, such a great king, and by the time his sin was over with, he was lying, adulterous murderer. Think about that. That's a serious thing. For something, something that seemed probably so little at the time, he knew it was big, but... His flesh took over, 
But I know he probably never sit there and thought, well, I'm going to have to kill. I'm going to have to lie to cover this up. And then I'm going to have to kill this guy if he doesn't go and lay with his wife. Sin takes us much farther than we want to go. So many times when we deal with things, we'll, we'll say, well, I'll compromise in this area. I'll compromise in this area. The next thing you know, you're doing this, and then you're doing right. this, right. and then, then you're doing this, and then you're strung out on something. Right. Yeah. It happens so many times. You know, I always heard Brother Birch would always say, the famous last words of a Christian are, I can handle it. Oh, yeah. oh I can handle that. It's not true. We should always walk with God. David probably seen Bathsheba and was like, well, I can handle this. And the things that happened to him. So I put, Nathan came to David as it were for advice. So he comes to him. He didn't come to him and blatantly say, hey man, the Lord told me what you did. He came to him in a way that tricked him. He came to him and said, hey, we had a rich man and a poor man here. The poor man had one lamb. The rich man had a ton. And he took, the rich man took that one poor man's thing. And you see, David was a shepherd. So he, he went throughout his life with sheep. Having the same reaction. I think now, sheep were more like our dogs. Now, how many people have dogs in here? You know how we just let the dogs come in? I know my dog, Harper, she's... She's the sweetest thing. She comes in, she thinks she's a lap dog, even though she's like 60 pounds. She comes in, she's laid down, she's this big old, big old mutt is what she is. And she's the sweetest thing. But she likes to lay in her bed, she likes to come with us, and I take care of her, and she loves it. Well, sheep were more like dogs back then. I mean, dogs were looked at like rats back then. But in our way, the way we can think of it is like our dogs. Like how they would take care of them, how they love the sheep. So this automatically struck a chord with David because he was a shepherd. So he knew what it was like to have an emotional connection with being a shepherd and, and herding those sheep. So he came to him for, it, for advice. David was so insensitive to his sin that he didn't even realize that Nathan was talking about him. And it was a year's time. So he didn't even know that he was talking about him. Shows you how insensitive he was. That the way that Nathan got through to him was by making him cast sentence upon himself. He came to him and told him, and he said, As surely as I live, this man will die. And he will restore fourfold to this man. Now think about that. He got David, and it's smart. It shows you how the Lord works. That he cast sentence upon himself. He didn't even know he was talking about himself. Mm -hmm. Imagine, I mean, David was the man that he despised. So many, I remember DC Talk used to have a song out. You know, it talked about, I'm the king of excuses. I've got one for every selfish thing I do. It said I, and, it, and it talked about how I despise my own behavior. David despised his own behavior. He wanted to kill that man, not even realizing he was talking about himself. He sent the punishment of God on himself by saying that. And he didn't even realize it. Ain't that like us a lot of times? You know, I've always thought about that. A lot of times we, we despise who we really are. You know, you, get, you got the people, you know, the liars. You can't stand a liar, but you're a liar yourself. Can't stand the people that gossip, but you're a gossiper. You be like, I can't stand here. All she does is run her mouth, but you run your mouth. You know what I'm saying? You can't stand a womanizer, but you're a womanizer yourself. You know, that's how it goes. We despise our own behaviors. David despised who he was. He wanted to kill who he was. It says sin is selfish. It doesn't just affect you. That's my point number three there. Sin is selfish. When we think, a lot of times when we think about sin and, and we're in sin and we do sin, we think that it's only going to affect us. But let's look at who it affected. This, spit, this sin here affected David, affected Bathsheba, affected Uriah, 
because he lost his life. And it affected the baby that lost its life. Four people were affected. And, and, and as the scripture says, the sword will never leave your house. Wow. And it never left David's house. Right. Because of this one sin that took him from, from sleeping with Bathsheba, committing adultery, that took him to be a liar and to a murderer, it never left his house. David was on a peak. And when he got to this point, it went downhill from there. He repented, true. But his ministry, his, his, everything that he had done built up to this point, And he was knocked off his pedestal, as it were. So many people, and it said David had everything. And this is something that struck, struck me. And it says in verse 7 here, it says, Then the Nathan said to the Lord, You are the man. This is what the Lord says. I anointed you king over Israel. He's telling him all the things that he done for him. I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you the house of Israel and Judah, and if all that had been too little, I would have given you even more. That goes to show you their relationship. That the Lord was talking to David like this. Yes. Almost like, are you kidding me? I gave you all these things. And you repay me by despising my law. That's what he said. He said, you have despised my law. You have sinned against me. And it just struck me when he said, I would have given you even more if that wasn't enough. And David was so low that I'm sure anything the Lord gave him was enough. But he had something and he wanted something that wasn't his. Right. See, the king, he, he probably got into that spoiled way where he was so used to getting anything he wanted when he went up there and seen another man's wife. Because he had thousands of wives. I mean, this wasn't, it wasn't like he was starving for nothing. I mean, he had this, and Uriah had one, and he took what wasn't his. You know, I, I think about one of my sons, I'll say this, when we go to the store, you know, there's always a toy there. Oh, yeah. That he wants. Oh, yeah. And you know, sometimes he'll get that toy and then we get home and he never wants to play with it. Yeah. I'll say, what's the deal here, man? I just spent 20 bucks on this toy. I said, well, it's not as good as I thought it was. Because it wasn't his. It always seems better when it's not yours. I remember that as a kid. I go to my friend's house and I play with that one toy they had all day. And then I get my own, and I didn't want nothing to do with it because it was mine now. I didn't want to play with it. Right. You know, it's always better when it's somebody else's. Oh, right. There you go. That's good. David wanted what wasn't his. Mm -hmm. it says David despised his own behavior and he cast sentence on himself, and he paid for his sins. David paid for his sins big time. Yes, he did. David had four sons that died. Mm -hmm. Four sons. And if you remember back to what we said, it says David said this man will repay for his sins fourfold. David's son, the baby died. Absalom died. Amenadam died. And Ab Abjondadja, I don't know how to, Adonja died as well. Four of David's sons died. Fourfold. He repaid and Absalom was one of his biggest thorns in his side. Oh, yes. yes, he was. And the sword never departed from his house. Ever. You know, I like it that, you know, in here, it shows you how the Lord works after everything that David had done and how long he went without sin. Or long, how long he went without repenting. He just simply said, I've sinned against God. And, the, and, and Nathan immediately replied, because he was speaking on behalf of God. And he said, and the Lord has forgiven you. Just like that. That's how easy it is when we get into our sin, because they, Nathan laid it all out on the table for him. And when he seen his sin, 
He simply just said, I've sinned. And he was sincere about it. You can hear, he didn't give no excuses. So many times when we're caught in our sin, because your sin will come to life. It doesn't matter if it's right now, in the moment, or it happens ten years down the line. Your sin always comes to life. Yes. But David, when he seen his sin, he simply repented. He didn't argue with him. He didn't say, well, she shouldn't have been on top of that building bathing. What was she thinking? He didn't say that. He said, I've sinned against God. And he said, the Lord has forgiven you and you will not die. Because like I said in the Old Testament, if you committed adultery, they'd stone you. So both Bathsheba and David deserved to die. But the, since he repented, God didn't kill David. But he still told him, even though you repented, your baby is still going to die. And even though he knew that God's God, and Nathan told him that, he still prayed for that child and wept and fasted for days and days and days. Even though that this ch child was born out of sin, he still loved that child. He loved it. It was his son. He had many sons and he loved this child. And he wept for days upon days without eating for this child. And he wrote a song. He wrote Psalm 51. Let's turn to Psalm 51 right now. Psalm 51 is a tremendous song. We sing a lot of our songs. You guys know here we sing Creating Me a Clean Heart here at least a couple times a month. And this psalm here is him. It says his plea for mercy and forgiveness and cleansing. And it says, verse 1, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, and blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. So that you, it says, and against you, and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you deserve truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the utmost place. <coughs> it says, cleanse me with your hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Amen. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sin, and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence, or take your Holy Spirit from me. This is such a real prayer. You can tell by this prayer of repentance where his heart was at now. He said, don't cast me from your presence or take your spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And grant me a willingness spirit to sustain me. We all remember when we were first saved. and My dad wrote a book called The Love You've Had at First. And just the love, just the, the amazing feeling when you were first saved. The joy that we had when we were first saved. He said, restore to me the joy of your salvation. And grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will treat, teach transgress, transgressors your way. And sinners will turn back to you. Save me from blood guilt, O God. The God who saves me. And my tongue will sing of your righteousness, O Lord. Open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. You delight, you do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. And your good pleasure make Zion prosper. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then there will be righteousness sacrifice 
whole burnt offerings to delight you, then bulls will be offered on your altar. He repented and turned away. Even though he repented, there were still many consequences for him. Yes. A lot of times we think just because we repent that there's not going to be consequences for our sin. That's not true. There is always consequences for the sin we do. My Sunday school teacher, Frank, he used to always say the sin we do is the sin we choose. Pretty simple. The sin you do is the sin you choose. David chose this sin to do this sin. He wasn't forced in it. But he repented and turned his life around. But there were still many trials that he had to go through because of that one sin that turned into many sins. There's still time to repent and turn away from the yes. sins that we've done. Amen. 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 Amen? You know, the Lord the Lord still opens wide for things that we've done. He's still there. He's still willing to forgive us. He was still willing to forgive David. He entrusted David to lead the people of Israel, and he did these things, but still allowed him to repent. Still allowed him to turn his life around. Can we pray this morning? Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord. Lord, 